Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Tech, and today we're installing Windows 7 in VMware Workstation. Before you get started, you want to make sure you have Windows 7, and Windows 7 can be either an ISO file or a DVD. And if you don't have a DVD but you do have a product key, well, you can download the ISO file directly from Microsoft. All you have to do is just Google Windows 7 ISO and click on the first link you see here. But if that link is no longer there or for some reason you don't see that link, I will link it down in the description so you can get to that website. But it's this website here, and it allows you to download the ISO file for whichever version of Windows you have. And you, you would just put in your product key right here click on verify and it tells you which version of Windows are you're, you're eligible for. Of course I'm eligible for Windows 7 Professional Service Pack 1 and then I would just select my language and English is my language and you would just see this website here once you click on confirm and once in this website it's going to give you two download links and they both expire in 24 hours at the time of creation. I recommend you download the 32-bit version because this ver uh, workstation doesn't work with 64, at least with me. I had problems installing a 64-bit Windows 7. It just told me that I couldn't do it. So I'm going to be doing 32-bit. I've already downloaded it, as you can see down here. So let's get started. I'm just going to jump into VMware Workstation, and we're going to go to our Home tab. If you uh, by accident deleted the Home tab, like I did just now, you just click on Tabs and go to Home tab and it, you should see your home tab there and if you have multiple operating systems you just go navigate to your home tab and it will allow you to create a new workstation or a virtual machine next we're going to click on create a new virtual machine and before you continue you want to make sure you know where you have your virtual machine disk or your your ISO file as I'm using here and if you're using a CD or a DVD you ought to make sure it's in your computer because this next step is what's gonna ask you for that so we're gonna click next on typical you can go custom advanced if you want but I'm gonna go typical just because it's easiest and next it's gonna ask you where you want to get the ISO file or if you want to use a disk of course I have a D I have a disk but I'm not gonna be using it because I don't like using disks it's not as fast as using an ISO file but if you are gonna be using a disk you click on install disk and it reads your DVD drive or your CD drive and it starts detecting the operating system. I don't have a disk on there with an operating system so it tells me that it couldn't detect an operating system but I am using an ISO file so I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna click on browse because that's not the version I want. The version I want is this one right here so click on that right there. Well, you just have to click on browse and it'll just search for your operating system and once you've selected it it says Windows 7 detected the operating system will use easy install of course yeah let's use an easy install then we click next you don't have to put in a product key if you don't want but I'm gonna click on Windows 7 professional here because that's what I'll be using and for a username I'll just use Alex you can of course probably change this later on and it says here you did not enter a Windows product key yeah you can and you can like not enter a product key and continue you would just have to put it in in the operating system later then we're gonna click next after we name our machine you can name it whatever you want I'm naming it Windows 7 because I would like to have my operating systems name based on what they are. Next we're gonna create a single virtual disk. If you create or split it it's gonna make it easier supposedly to transfer over to another machine but I'm not gonna be transferring anything over so I'll create a virtual single disk file and I'm gonna make it 128 gigs so when you do that make sure you have 128.0 because then it might think it's 128 megabytes. Then we click next and we see here that for RAM it's giving it one gig and as we all know that's not enough to run Windows 7 so we're gonna click on this here customize hardware once we click on customize hardware we can select memory and we're gonna give it four gigs of course my computer has 16 gigs of RAM but I don't want to give it eight I'll give it four and for processors I'll give it one and make that a dual core processor so that that's all we're gonna mess around with here sound card it's automatic as well as your display although if you can change any of this stuff or you want to change anything you can of course and then if you do go into display you can give it a um, variable here or, or a number for your graphics memory of course my card only supports up to one gig so that's what I'm gonna give it and we're gonna click on close and then I forgot to mention that you can add certain things by clicking this here and you can add certain features or if you accidentally remove a feature you can add it back on here but I'm not going to do any of that and we're gonna click on close 
4 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. You can give it however much you want. This is what I'm going to be doing for this installation. So we're going to click on finish and it starts creating a disk. This is going to take some time to do. And I forgot to mention that I am running this on a true desktop computer running Windows 10. This is not a virtual machine or me trying to run a virtual machine in a virtual machine. This is actually a legit desktop computer running Windows 10. It has an Intel Core i7 quad core processor, 2.9 gigahertz, I believe, with 16 gigs of RAM and one gig of, of video memory. Of course, I do want to upgrade that to at least four gigs, maybe. But for now, this is what it'll have to do. And it does just fine. It's a wonderful computer. It's nice and fast. And as you can see, it's creating the disk image. And depending on how big you make it, I think it changes how fast it goes. So now it's telling me that the binary translation, blah, blah, blah. You can pause and read that if you want. I'm going to click OK and continue. And it's telling me right here that the following devices can be connected. I don't really care. And here we are, loading into Windows. Now if you want to do get out of Windows and click outside of the virtual machine, you would have to press Control and Alt together. And that releases the mouse. And we're going to go into full screen, but as you know, clicking full screen, you do get that little blue bar at the top that you can use to come up here and move this. And to change this so you can go completely full screen, you would go to view and exclusive mode. It's going to tell you exclusive mode to get out of it. Press control and alt key in combination. So we're going to go ahead and enter in exclusive mode. So we're just running the virtual machine. And as you can see, it's pretty downscaled in resolution. And I'll show you how to fix that once we're finished installing Windows 7. It shouldn't take too long, hopefully not. I am running this on a Samsung SSD, this computer, 512 gigs. So it should be pretty fast, and I think much faster than running it on parallels in Mac. And of course, I do have this tutorial of installing Windows 7 in uh, parallels and I think it just skipped over creating all the stuff that we usually do when you install Windows 7 like making a file or formatting the hard drive and stuff like that but who cares really it does it automatically and it should be faster although I do have to mention that you do have to punch in your product key once you go into the operating system which is really no big problem you have to do it on any other computer but but we're going to have to wait till it installs everything. So we'll be back once everything is installed. Next, we're just going to go ahead and click on Restart Now. And that's going to just speed up the process just a little bit. But it doesn't matter if you let it run through and let it restart automatically. So after we see the, uh, the, the desktop here, it's going to start installing VMware Tools, which basically gives you drivers for your display. And it's going to make the uh, image file or the image look better. It's actually going to fill the screen, hopefully. And we're just going to let it download. But if it doesn't automatically start downloading, you just want to exit out by pressing Control-Alt. Then you go up to the little taskbar here and virtual machine and it would say here install VMware tools and because this is Windows it should do it automatically. It should start downloading. It's not as complicated as Ubuntu or Zorin. So we're going to let this install and right away it's asking us to select a network location. Of course I am at home so we're going to select home. And it's going to start to connect to our network and right away you can see that the display driver kicked in and we're now looking at Windows 7 in full screen of course I am running this in 1080p so that's what we're getting and it's gonna start to uh, restart because of course it's gonna have to install those drivers but that's just fine it's good to see that it's going to restart and we're gonna finally see this in full HD and of course you do see that little blue bar at the top that is that taskbar and again I'll show you how to uh, get rid of that just go to view and exclusive mode and then just enter exclusive mode and it's gone. Now you're exclusively using the virtual machine. Which if you just want to immerse yourself into an old operating system like me, that's probably something you want to do. And of course since this is Windows 7, I like Windows 10, but Windows 7 is still like one of my favorite ones. And I see here that it's not in full HD, so we're going to see what happened. Let's go to screen resolution, see what's going on here. And there we go, we can support up to 2160 resolution for some reason, but we're going to go ahead and go up to uh, 1080p because that's what my screen supports. Yeah, let's go ahead and apply. And there we go, we're full HD now, so we're going to click on keep changes. 
And I believe we should support the um, Windows Arrow. If we don't, I'm not sure what's going on, but Windows 7. That's the theme with the Windows Arrow. So let's see if that's supported. If that's supported, I guess our computer's fast enough and we can use it. And yes, it does support Windows Arrow, but I'm going to go back to Windows 7 Basic because I actually like Windows 7 Basic. Computer runs a little faster like that too. I'm not really a big fan of that Arrow stuff, although it does look nice. So what next to do if you didn't put in your product key is to put in a product key. So we're just going to go ahead and go to the Windows and we're going to right click on Computer and then go to Properties. And then once this comes out, it says since system rating is not available, but that's okay. And you can see here Windows, uh, I mean Intel Core i7 at 2.9 gigahertz. And 3 gigs of RAM are usable because I'm using a 32-bit operating system. Like I said, 64-bit didn't really want to work for me. So I had to uh, double down to 32-bit. And now it says here 30 days left to activate. And you can just click here and punch in your product key. And if I click on activate Windows Online now, it's not going to do anything except ask me for a product key this is where you would put it click next and it should activate and that's how you install Windows 7 in uh, VMware workstation if you want to update you just click on the little flag here and update and right there it is Windows update and just turn on automatic updates and update the operating system and now you can use it for whatever it is you want to use it for and that's how you install Windows 7 in VMware Workstation. I'll eventually get to around to making a video for Windows 8 and Windows 10. And hopefully, just for the novelty, do Windows Vista and XP, just for the sake. And I'll end up doing those videos too for parallels, if that's what you're looking for. So with that being said, thank you all for watching. See you all in the next video.